an eigenvalue greater than 1, do not use that rule. It's been criticized so often and does have some theoretical foundation. Uh, but um, we used the parallel analysis to determine the number of factors, and it told us that we should extract 3, in my opinion, because I ignored the other 2 that were extremely small and probably just correlated residuals. Uh, maximum iterations for convergence 25. It's quite rare to need more. I would say that if you do need more, if you need to pump that up, there's probably actually something wrong with your model. You're probably extracting too many factors or uh, there's some multicollinearity in your data. Uh, it's usually a problem, I think, if you need to change your convergence iterations. So click to continue. Rotation. Uh, as I explained in the principal components analysis, always choose uh, a oblique rotation. So there's Veramax, Quadramax, Equimax uh, that are orthogonal, and then there's direct Oblomin and Promax that are oblique. And so uh, what these will do will rotate the uh, factors in such a way uh, that the uh, axes will not be um, at total 95 degree angles to each other because they'll be allowed to correlate with each other. And in the real, uh, in experience, in nature, most factors are correlated with each other to some degree. Uh, so it's unnatural to force them to be uncorrelated as Veramax forces them to. Uh, whereas direct Oblomin and Promax allow correlations. Delta zero, uh, I, I'm not familiar with any research to show that using one uh, delta value as your uh, uh, one value is better than the other. Um, there might be some research out there. I'm not familiar with it. I use direct Oblomin. It, it hasn't steered me wrong very much. I think a lot of this, uh, a lot of use of orthogonal rotation um, exists because th there was a time where getting computers to do uh, uh, oblique rotation was just tough. Uh, and so Today, I think more and more people agree that using an oblique rotation is the best because if your data are naturally uncorrelated, if the factors really are uncorrelated, and that's the best representation in terms of gaining sp simple structure, well, direct Oblomin will produce an unrotated, a basically unrotated, uh, or I should say it'll be rotated, but it will be a um, orthogonal uncorrelated factor solution. So you get the best of both worlds by using direct Oblomin. Um, so ro display rotated solution, loading plots. I don't get a lot out of loading plots myself, especially if you have anything more than uh, two factors. It really starts to get complicated in my opinion. Uh, so I'm going to click on OK. Uh, scores. I don't really want any scores. You can uh, get scores uh, for each factor that you can then use uh, to correlate with other things. And I think that can be quite useful, but I'm not going to do it in this case. Uh, and then we got the options here. Coefficient display format. And I think that's important. You want to sort them by size. It really greatly facilitates the interpretation of a uh, of the factor loadings, particularly in the pattern matrix. Um, but then there's the suppress small coefficients. And a lot of people tick that, and I don't know why. I think. You should see information. If you, um, it, you'll see some factor loadings that are small, and I'd rather see that it's 0.29 rather than 0.05. So if you suppress small coefficients and you specify, you know, a value of less than 0.2 or something like that, you're not going to really see what's exactly going on. So I never click on that. I think in this case, I actually want to see the factor loadings. I want more information. So we click OK to run the analysis and the first table that we get in the factor analysis is the descriptives with the means and the standard deviations. I think it's always important to check out your means and standard deviations because it can usually alert you to some errors in your data. I haven't actually looked in this demonstration to look for outliers and some uh, data input errors. Uh, I'm going to assume that you've already done that in your data. You should do that for every analysis you do, you do not just factor analysis. Uh, but the item, I'll note that the items are all, you know, roughly what I'd expect, somewhere in the one to three ballpark. Uh, then we get the correlation matrix, and we can see that there are a lot of positive correlation makes, uh, co correlations amongst all the items. So there's going to be a global factor. There's going to be a general factor in my data. But there's also a little bit of negative, there's a little negative correlation here, and some of the correlations are pretty small. Uh, that's a negative 0.008, negative 0.01. But overall, there's a, there's a positive 
uh, manifold, what people call a positive manifold in the data as I expect. Um, so you just want to look at your correlation matrix to see that everything's going